When I was at the Epping Onga Railway, I noticed this rather forlorn-looking Finnish steam locomotive. There was, until recently, another Finnish locomotive at Barking, although I kind of wish someone had told me before I started filming this video that it had been moved. There are several other locomotives from Finland here in the UK, and it's all because of something called the Strategic Reserve, and that's what I'd like to talk about today. Steam locomotives have been considered obsolete for several decades now. In most countries, they're a novelty. At best, they might be kept running as a tourist attraction or on industrial sites out of the way. Once diesel and electric traction became viable, the writing was on the wall for steam. Except, not entirely. In 1945, a new story began to unfold. The Cold War. A massive, tense ideological conflict between communism and capitalism, dominated by the USSR and the USA. Decades of mistrust in which the world seemed poised on the brink of a third world war, a war that threatened the very existence of civilization. What made the situation so frightening was a piece of technology perfected in the closing months of the Second World War. The atom bomb. A weapon of horrifying capability where one single bomb could wipe out a city. Both sides raced to have the most numerous and deadly nuclear devices in the hope of persuading the other side not to use theirs. The flaw in this thinking must be obvious and there were several occasions when the Cold War nearly turned hot through escalation, through brinkmanship, or even through simple misunderstanding. The result could have been the end of humanity. While the politicians shook their fists at each other and argued over who had the biggest weapon, so to speak, those at home prepared for the worst. Civil defence measures were put in place in the hope that, if the bomb did drop, society could be back on its feet reasonably quickly. The strategic steam reserve was part of that. One of the effects of the atomic bomb is an electromagnetic pulse, or EMP. This is a wave of energy emanating from the bomb whose effect is, basically, to fry anything electrical that gets in its way. So, even if you escape the destruction of the initial blast or the subsequent fallout, an awful lot of your machinery won't work. And that includes most modern trains. Given that trains would be an important part of any reconstruction effort, several countries decided that a fallback solution was needed. And that's where steam trains come in. Steam locomotives are purely mechanical. They run on coal, although they can be adapted to run on just about anything that burns. In other words, should your country happen to get a nuclear bomb in the face, steam engines are, in theory at least, your best hope for getting things up and running. A number of countries stockpiled old steam locomotives in order to ensure that they would be prepared for the worst. This was the strategic reserve. Sweden had one, the USSR did. Italy had a sort of reserve of locomotives for general emergencies. And Finland did. Over the decades, the reserves were disbanded. In particular, with the end of the Cold War, it was believed that there was no longer a need for nuke-proof trains. That's why a whole bunch of Finnish locomotives suddenly appeared on heritage railways. In 1968, the last steam locomotives were withdrawn from the mainline British railway network. And almost immediately, rumours started spreading. Stories suggesting that, perhaps, not all the locomotives that were being withdrawn were going to the scrapyard. Most interestingly, enthusiasts noticed certain gaps in the lists of locomotives being sent for scrap. Other stories started to emerge. Tales of locomotives on the verge of withdrawal being sent to the works for a full overhaul. Of strange locomotive movements late at night. Of locomotive crews being relieved of duty halfway through their shifts while driving engines to be scrapped. A passenger recounted a tale of falling asleep on the train at Birmingham, only to wake up in a yard full of steam locomotives painted black. I mean, the engines were painted black, not the passenger. Volunteers at Heritage Railways told of military training exercises being held on their lines. Some questioned why so many locomotives with years of useful life in them were being withdrawn from service. 
For instance, the 9F heavy freight engines were designed to work into the 80s at least, and the last one had only been completed in 1960. Soon the rumours coalesced into a single conspiracy theory. Britain had its own strategic reserve and it was being kept secret from the public. Theories also arose as to where it was. The most popular was that it was in a secret shed that could be accessed from Box Tunnel. Another said that it was in the Dean Forest, possibly under camouflage netting. Wilder ones had it that they were in secret tunnels under Birkenhead, or even off the northern line of the London Underground. Given that the northern line is too small for conventional trains, I think we can safely say that the last one is definitely not true right off the bat. Now, I must apologise for being vague here. The Cold War ended before the advent of the World Wide Web, so the Internet's capacity for housing conspiracy theories was not available. The strategic reserve is just not a very fashionable concept these days. Rumours spread largely through word of mouth or the odd magazine article or perhaps a mention in a book. For many enthusiasts, not only did they think it could be true, but they wanted it to be true. The lists of supposedly stockpiled engines included several examples of classes that didn't survive the cutter's torch, like the Great Western Railway's county class. By the mid-80s, the list even included a number of early diesels, such as the Class 29 and one of the Blue Pullman trains, both long extinct. Wouldn't it be incredible if one day these vanished trains reappeared on the network? Ideally, without, you know, the end of the world as we know it. Unfortunately, railway enthusiasts tend to be fairly detail-oriented people, although you wouldn't know it from my videos and subsequent research began closing the gaps in the scrap list. The fact was that records just weren't very well kept, so it was easy for a few engines to slip off the list and not be recorded on another. It transpired that the alleged missing engines had been cut up at railway works or at smaller scrapyards rather than the larger contractors that British Railways favoured. Some of the alleged survivors were simple mistakes. The Blue Pullman had been mistakenly listed as preserved in a book due to an attempt to save it from scrap, which had subsequently failed. As for the other rumours, well, British Railways was plagued by mismanagement in the 50s and 60s, and a lot of decisions were made that subsequently proved, shall we say, regrettable. So it's really not that surprising that resources would be wasted on building and overhauling engines due to be withdrawn. The sources for sightings of strange locomotive movements and locomotives in unexpected places are hardly based on sworn testimony, and are usually lacking in sufficient detail to confirm them. I fear we can dismiss a lot of them as being based on mistakes, misremembering, or even outright lies. Stories of soldiers being trained on heritage railways not only don't confirm the existence of the reserve, but they actually speak against it. Wouldn't it make sense to train the soldiers on the locomotives they'd actually be using? You know, the ones that are maintained in working order? The reality is that they were likely being trained to operate steam trains in places like the Middle East and Eastern Europe, which at the time were still using a lot of such locomotives. Interestingly, there was a secret underground complex next to Box Tunnel the Cold War citadel known as Burlington, to which the government was to be evacuated in the event of nuclear war. However, it has since been decommissioned and cameras have been allowed in. There's a lot down there, but no steam locomotives. Skeptics also asked, why would such a reserve be secret anyway? Sure, Sweden, Finland, etc. weren't exactly public about where their reserves were kept, but they made no secret of the fact that they had one. It might even be argued that it makes more sense to advertise to the enemy that an attack would not be as devastating as they might have hoped. In 1991, the Cold War came to an end, and there was no revelation of hidden locomotives, no blue pullman, no counties. A 2011 Freedom of Information request turned up no records. It seems all but certain that there is no strategic steam reserve, and there never was. The more time passes, the less likely it seems. Some enthusiasts console themselves with the fact that the many heritage railways around the country could themselves act as a strategic reserve in the event of war. 
Given how bad governments are at keeping secrets in general, I find it hard to believe that they could have maintained something the size of the reserve without it getting out for over 50 years. There's also the somewhat depressing fact to consider that in the event of a nuclear war breaking out, the chances are that the rail network and society as a whole would be in no fit state to get trains running again. Like the nuclear war precautions we actually got, it seems that this one would have been absurdly optimistic. On the other hand, I could be a government plant and this whole thing is just here to put you off the scent. I'll let you decide. Well, I do hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please do leave a like and consider subscribing for more. I'd like as ever to thank my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon and here on YouTube for your support. You are the mysteriously unscathed rail network to my nuclear war. And I will see you all again very soon. Cheerio.